We gather on this day as Christians united in prayer. In the midst of our busy lives, we pause to pray as we reflect on the suffering journey of Christ. The journey that Jesus made on that day remains a symbol of Christianity in the world, as it struggles with its own crosses and failures and the challenges of modern life. Through these stations of the cross, Jesus is inviting us to journey with him and to reflect on his suffering as it continues in the lives of his people. Let us be people who outwardly put into practice all we have learned, received and heard through Christ. Open our eyes, ears and hearts. Be open to see the face of Jesus in our own journey and those around us. Jesus is unfairly accused and put on trial for loving and caring about others. Pilate convicts Jesus even though he knows it is wrong to please the crowd. Sometimes we meet people and judge them because of the way they look or act. Sometimes we forget to do the right thing and follow the crowd. Dear Jesus, help us to be fair and help us not to judge others. Help us to stand up for what we believe in and always do the right thing. Keep us close to you. Help us to call out to you, especially when we are sad and lonely. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Help me to see your face. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Help me to see. Jesus is made to carry the cross on which he will die. It represents the weight of all our crosses. Once the punishment is announced, Jesus knows there is only one way for him to go. He takes up his cross and starts on his way. His innocent body is badly bruised from head to toe and he is so alone now. Yet somehow he sees all love and strength God is giving him and he continues on his way. Sometimes our problems seem so heavy and painful. Like your cross, it feels like it's crushing. When we feel alone, we wonder, are we the only one? Dear Jesus, help us remember that we are not alone. God and our family and friends can help if we ask them. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your voice. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear. The cross is heavy and Jesus is weak. The soldiers are pushing him along. When all of a sudden he stumbles and falls. Sometimes we say mean things that hurt others. It is like falling. Like every time we do not listen to our conscience, to our parents, or fail to do our homework, or we are dishonest in a test or in a relationship. Dear Jesus, we make mistakes. Help us to realise that when we hurt others or do not help when we can, we are hurting ourselves and those who love. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to Along the road, Mary catches a glimpse of her son and for a brief moment their eyes meet. Imagine the pain she must feel, knowing that she cannot do anything to help him. A mother is loving and forgiving, one who shares our sorrow and pain as it were her own. Our joy is her joy, our sadness, her sadness. Dear Jesus, help us to love your mother Mary, who you love so much. Help us to open our hearts and share our sadness with others. Help us to know our friends are there to stand up with us when we are sad and lonely. Help us to open our hearts so we can always accept help. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Help me to see your face. Open my eyes. Simon did not want to get involved, but by the time they reached the top of the hill, he was glad he had helped Jesus. Sometimes we argue about having to help or to do things we don't want to do. 
Dear Jesus, help us to be more like Simon and be strong enough to step up when we see or hear a need of those closest to us in our school, our community or our world. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your voice. Open my ears. Help me to hear. Jesus falls again. The cross seems heavier now, and the pain is stronger. Yet no one there could take away his suffering. He was all alone. There are times, like Jesus, we feel alone. Dear Jesus, in our own lives we have been in pain and afraid. But with help from our families, mates, teachers and you, we have made it through so far. When the sadness and pain comes back, it seems worse than ever, but with your help, we know we can get through. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love. Jesus stands on top of the hill and is stripped of his clothes. He teaches us that we should value people more than things. All the material things like clothes, iPods and computers that seem so valuable to us today are often thrown away tomorrow. Everything we have is a gift from you. Everything we do, we try to do for you. Dear Jesus, please help us to remember that with you in our lives, we have everything we need. The soldiers roughly placed Jesus down on the cross and nails are driven into his hands and feet. Sometimes we must give up what we have or do what we do not want to do. Dear Jesus, help us to forgive people who hurt us or make our lives difficult, the same way you forgave those who nailed you to the cross. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your Jesus knows everything has been completed. He yells out, it is finished, then bows his head and gives his spirit to God. It was so unnecessary for Jesus to die this way. He was not a criminal. He had done nothing wrong. Sometimes sad things happen to people we love. Dear Jesus, you die so that also all those who believe in you and live like you will share in the great reward of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus' body is placed in a tomb where it remains for three days. The people gathered around to mourn his death and remember him. When Jesus came back to life, all people got a new beginning. His resurrection shows his never-ending love for us. Jesus gives us his Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, help us to remember how you lived and that when you came back to life, you opened the gates of heaven for us, our friends and families. You conquered death and have given us hope everlasting. We have seen the message of Jesus through his journey to the cross. Let us now listen to the word of Jesus in the readings for today. The prophet Isaiah, whose name means the Lord saves, once again invites us to take up our cross in the sure and certain hope that the Lord will always be there to save and look after us. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, 
so that I may know how to reply to the wearied he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore up my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. My vindicator is here at hand. Does anyone start proceedings against me? Then let us go to court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who will dare to condemn me? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Taunts have broken my heart. I have reached the end of my strength. I looked in vain for compassion, for consolers not could I, were not one could I find. For food they gave me poison, in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. The poor, when they see it, will be glad. And God's seeking hearts will revive. If for the Lord listens to the needy. He does not spurn his servants in their chains. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 silver pieces, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go to so-and-so in the city, he replied, and say to him, The master says, My time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was at table with the twelve disciples. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, Not I, Lord, surely. He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate. As the scriptures say, he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is portrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely. They are your own words, answered Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear students, staff and families, uh, we're entering into into, uh, an Easter like uh, no other. And uh, I've been reflecting upon uh, the isolation that we've been experiencing, the isolation of uh, Jesus as well during this most holy week, when uh, so much was taken away from Jesus. Uh, His uh, gift of his life was taken from him um, so early. But uh, so many other things, physically, emotionally and spiritually, And this week is an opportunity for us to look upon the person of Jesus, to hear his story again, and to allow ourselves to be won over by his love, by uh, the courage, the faith, the hope, and the love that he has shown, uh, which has impacted the world 
And uh, perhaps this uh, time of isolation for ourselves is a time when we can perhaps come closer to God and uh, through the person and story of Jesus. God bless. Our liturgy marks the final days of our Lenten journey. We commenced on Ash Wednesday. Have you taken up the challenge of giving something up so others may have more? Or have you taken up something extra that has made the world around you a better place? Today we celebrate and give thanks for the many and diverse cultures of the staff and students that come together to make up our St Edmunds College community. As we watch the presentation today, highlighting and celebrating culture, we remember that Jesus through his journey has invited us to be people of acceptance, hope and peace to all in our community to make it stronger. Well, my name in Australian is Sunny, and uh, my summer name is Phyllisa. My name is Devin Clive Holbrook, and I was born in Kansas State. So my name is Johnson Cui, and my Chinese name is Xiao Bo Cui. My my cultural background is Chinese is, is a Chinese people. Uh, my name is Philip Sami Wakesa, and I was born in Belgium, but my parents are Kenyan. Fred Zab, uh, Maltese Australian. Uh, my name is B. Lim and I am Cam and I have a uh, Cambodian uh, background. Cool name is uh, Tim MacArthur, otherwise known as Timothy Enipiusevir Brown Tolum Tololo Tolo Papa MacArthur. Is my parents are Polynesian, Scottish, Kiwi, and obviously an Aussie. So, my name is Camilla Wilson, and my cultural background is Italian Australian. Okay, so I'm Ashley Karen, and I am of Greek descent and Irish descent on my mother's side. Cultural Clothes Day is really an opportunity to celebrate everybody's um, cultural background or diversity. Also what um, has contributed to our values and who we are today. Everybody comes from such a different place, uh, socially, emotionally and culturally, and it's really a wonderful celebration. It means everything to me. I'm a really big advocate for celebration of cultures. I'm also the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander coordinator at the school, so it's really important for me in that job to celebrate that culture and that community. Um, so for me it's really important, my culture is a big part of my life as well, so the fact that Eddie celebrates that and we have a day that celebrates that is really great. It um, means to me it's like a gathering where our cultural people come together and start sharing their cultures with us. I feel like it's kind of everyone who's from like a different place in the world come to one place to share about their culture and what they really like about it. Um, I feel like it's an opportunity for people from other cultures to share with other people their background and where they come from. It gives us an opportunity for those that from a, a background other than Australian born that um, we can express where we've come from, celebrate that um, and also share with others about our culture and the similarities, differences, etc. It means that it means the multiculturalism in Australia and it's a very important part of the Australian society. Uh, for me, it means you can just be you. You can wear what you want, you can be you. It's a day where we can celebrate lots of cultures and be able to come together as a, as a great country. Um, I feel like my culture really just represents who I am, especially because my parents are Kenyan, so the Kenyan culture has really been brought up into me, especially during my childhood. Uh, just to respect your elders and respect everyone and that's what my culture stands out as. Difficult because um, Maltese, I guess when my uh, father came out and my in-laws came out, it was post World War II. So there was that resilience, uh, there was that coming to a country, a new start and it was about banding together and getting involved, working because a lot of the migrants at that time were uh, involved with the building of the Snowy Mountain Scheme. So we brought skills, we brought a culture to Australia that was still newborn and had suffered from World War II. And like the Greeks, the Italians, the Spanish and, and so on, built and helped put together what we see today. My culture says that I'm a great Han people who, has, who actually lives in the Zhongyuan area. And also at the same time, we also have other people who has non-Han people and we also treat them as part of the Chinese communities. And our culture teach us of, of, of actually accept everyone no matter where you are 
and where you come from. We treat everyone as the same. My culture has uh, shaped me in terms of my values. We have strong family values um, in my Italian Australian upbringing. Um, also, the love of family and love of food. So two things that can unite and, and divide us. Um, and it's shaped who I am because my priorities are very much based on caring for the other and caring for those who, um, who I love. And um, whether that be through conversation or whether that be through sharing a meal. I think it says that I'm probably an old Greek woman at heart. Um, I love cooking Greek food, but I think it's made me a more worldly person as well. Um, the thing I studied at uni was teaching English as a second language and that's because my grandparents didn't speak English so I've always been really passionate about education in that regard so I think it's shaped me a lot as a person. Or just to be proud of who you are as a person, be proud of where you've come from, acknowledging the past but also um, paving the way for the future. Throughout Lent, we have been supporting Caritas's appeal of Project Compassion. Many countries and cultures throughout the world have experienced sacrifice and faced many challenges, just like Jesus due to circumstances beyond their control. With money we have raised today, we are the face of Jesus to those communities letting them know they are not alone. Through Caritas, they will receive hope and a means to achieve a better future. As we leave from here, be the person who actively puts into practice all that you have learned, received or heard from Christ today.